Deep beneath an ancient Egyptian burial site, a team of archaeologists are exploring tombs first excavated more than a hundred years before. But this time around, they discover something incredible an all too rare insight into the enigmatic process of mummification. The find promises new revelations about the methodology behind the mysterious and long forgotten rite. From the Great Pyramid of Giza to the countless relics that fill museum cabinets around the world, the influence of ancient Egypt can still be felt globally today. Yet, however much we already know about this great North African civilization, there is always more to learn. There is much about ancient Egyptian culture and traditions that, for now at least, remains lost to time. The story of one of the world's oldest and grandest cultures began way back in the 31st century BC with the unification of the two kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt. The king responsible, Narmer, also known as Menes, is today regarded as the first pharaoh, although the Egyptians themselves wouldn't come to use this term until almost 2,000 years later. Nonetheless, the template created by Narmer, now known as the Early Dynastic Period, would endure for about 3,000 years. During those early days, the ancient Egyptians also founded Memphis, the first capital of their great kingdom. Indeed, for millennia, the city remained the most important in the region. And even though it eventually lost its status with the founding of Alexandria in the 4th century BC, its ruins continue to fascinate archaeologists to this day. Of all the many arcane rites of ancient Egypt, among the most fascinating is the practice of mummification. Now it's often observed that the process was carried out to preserve human remains in preparation for the afterlife. However, the full story is much more complex and nuanced than that. According to experts, the practice of mummification may date as far back as the earliest Egyptian dynasties. And apparently, it has its roots in the ancient belief that the human soul could be broken down into three parts. Without the body to act as a vessel for the different elements, it was feared that these pieces could become scattered and lost. Because of this belief, the ancient Egyptians were terrified of any harm coming to their physical bodies after death. So, those with the means often took steps to safeguard their corpses. For example, sometimes tombs would be inscribed with prayers designed to shield their inhabitants. Keen to remain in top condition for the afterlife, many of ancient Egypt's richer inhabitants chose to have their corpses mummified after their death. And although many of the associated rituals changed over time, it's believed that the essential motivation, preserving the physical body as a vessel for one's immortal soul, remained the same across the centuries. Ancient scripts suggest that mummification took approximately 70 days and involved a number of different stages. First, the body was cleaned and prayed over before being bathed in a primitive disinfectant. After that, the organs were taken out of the corpses and mummified in a separate process, often interred next to the cadaver in vessels known as canopic jars. After the organs were removed, the body was left to dehydrate, using salt to speed up the drying process. After about a month, the corpse underwent another 30 days of ritual and anointment with various oils. Eventually, the cadaver was wrapped in linen, the final step in a process that the ancient Egyptians believed imbued mere humans with a measure of immortality. Given that the ancient Egyptians practiced mummification thousands of years ago, our understanding of the process today is remarkable. However, many mysteries remain. For example, we still do not fully grasp how the different perfumes and oils were used to preserve bodies or of what exactly they were composed. Interestingly, a recent discovery looks set to shed some light on these enduring puzzles, and the find was uncovered in Saqqara, the vast ancient Egyptian burial ground associated with the former capital of Memphis. Now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the area is also home to the Pyramids of Giza, perhaps some of the best-known relics in the Lost World. According to legend, Memphis was founded back in the 31st century BC when the first pharaoh channeled the water of the Nile and built his capital on its banks. And by the time it was finally surpassed by Alexandria, it had apparently served as the focal point of ancient Egypt for almost 3,000 years. At various points in its history, some experts believe that it was the biggest city in the world, with a population of 30,000. With so many inhabitants, the citizens of Memphis needed a sizable burial ground, and during the early dynastic period, the first of the city's nobles were interred at Saqqara. Later, kings began building tombs and pyramids in the necropolis, and today the site covers more than 62 square miles. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the rich history of Saqqara has caught the attentions of numerous archaeologists over the years. 
and in the 19th century the first excavations took place at a site close to the pyramid of Unas a fifth dynasty Pharaoh who ruled ancient Egypt in the 24th century BC after that initial excavation the site at Saqqara was left undisturbed for more than a hundred years then in 2016 a joint team of German and Egyptian archaeologists decided to take another look apparently they hope to use the latest technological advances to reveal new insights about the location in July 2018 a group of officials and journalists gathered at Saqqara to hear the results of the new probe and according to the director of the Saqqara Sate tombs project dr. Ramadan Baudry Hussein there had been some exciting discoveries we are standing before a gold mine of information he told the audience buried beneath the ancient necropolis archaeologists had discovered a kind of proto funeral parlor where mummification once took place and according to experts it's the first such establishment ever found thought to date from the Sate Persian period between 664 and 404 BC during this time the Egyptian Sate dynasty ruled over the region followed by the Persian Archimedid Empire apparently the mummy workshop was constructed from limestone and mud bricks and was equipped with vats where the bodies would be prepared however that was far from the most exciting discovery made at the site in the depths of a 12 meter shaft the archaeologists found a chamber packed with incredible artifacts amazingly the pit contained hundreds of cups and bowls that had been used in the embalming process thousands of years ago and what's more the containers were marked with labels detailing the substances that they had once held as well as guidance on how to apply them together archaeologists hope that these artifacts will shine new light on the ancient practice this discovery is so important as it's extensive Hussein explained we have oils and measuring cups all of them are labeled from this we can find the chemical composition of the oils and discover what they are moreover the site has also offered up clues as to who exactly was buried there apparently a burial shaft stretching about 300 meters was discovered adjoining the embalming workshop inside archaeologists discovered dozens of mummified bodies additionally they also found a number of sarcophagi made out of stone one of which appeared to be the final resting place of a woman named Tadahor interestingly the team found a number of afterlife related statuettes known as Ushabti surrounding Tadahor sarcophagus formed by a type of glazed pottery known as faience these figurines were typically placed in tombs by the ancient Egyptians apparently they believed that the Ushabti would follow them into the afterlife where they would take care of chores amazingly the mummified priest was wearing a mask forged from gilded silver and precious onyx with inlaid accents of obsidian and calcite and according to experts such a discovery is incredibly rare moreover it's believed that the artifact represented a crucial stage in the journey of the deceased gilded silver masks had a deep religious meaning Hussein told archaeology magazine Egyptian religious texts indicate that the bones of the gods are made of silver and their flesh is made of gold a mummy mask of silver and gold is a step towards the transformation of the deceased into a god however it doesn't appear to be just priests and nobles who were laid to rest at this site there are clear socio-economic differences between the mummies and the shaft Hussein explained to the audience assembled at Saqqara we see that mummification happened above ground while some of those buried down there were either buried in private or shared chambers for Hussein and his team the discovery represents an incredible opportunity to learn more about ancient Egypt in particular the find offered fresh insights into the complex ways in which this civilization regarded death moreover their success served as an effective showcase of the benefits of revisiting old sites armed with new technology Egypt needs a second round of excavation focusing on the old sites explored in the 19th century Hussein enthused we can use new examination and documentation techniques and it will be fruitful every time we find new things that were left behind meanwhile experts plan to continue exploring Saqqara according to Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities head dr. Mostafa Waziri the site could still yield many exciting discoveries in fact he interrupted the press conference in Saqqara to get stuck into the excavations himself this is just the beginning he told the crowd it's a very rich area I'm sure we're going to find more notably the survival of such incredible artifacts at Saqqara was made all the more miraculous by the region's tumultuous past for example back in 2011 protests against police brutality in Egypt escalated into a full-blown revolution and when looters took to the streets Saqqara's storerooms were ransacked a number of times 
while other Egyptian sites such as the necropolis at Darshur and the burial mound at Leisht suffered greatly during the revolution, most of the monuments at Saqqara escaped serious damage. However, political unrest in the region continued and the visitors who had once flocked to its ancient ruins began to disappear. Before the revolution, tourism in Egypt had reached a peak of almost 15 million visitors a year, but in 2011 that figure plummeted to just 9 million. Then in 2013, a military coup saw President Mohamed Morsi ousted, and to the international community that provided even more reason to stay away from the country and its archaeological treasures. However, as time passed and the region stabilized, the Egyptian authorities began to dream up ways to bring tourists back to the area. And naturally, archaeology played a central role in these plans. Eventually, in 2012, workers began construction on the Grand Egyptian Museum, an ambitious project for which plans have been in the pipeline for 20 years. A dedicated archaeological museum, the structure is set to be the largest of its kind in the world, packed with artifacts from ancient Egypt. Located close to the Giza pyramids, the site will also feature some of the region's most famous discoveries, such as the mummy and grave goods of boy king Tutankhamun. For the Grand Egyptian Museum's director, Dr. Tarek Taufik, it's an opportunity to reintroduce the treasures of this fascinating region. Egypt never ceases to surprise the world in terms of new discoveries of its ancient history, he told the crowd at Saqqara. We will also surprise the world with how we display these discoveries. However, the opening of the world's most ambitious archaeological museum has not been plain sailing. Apparently, selected artifacts from the Saqqara dig were due to be displayed when the first phase of the facility was due to open in 2018. However, various displays have kept the doors of the attraction firmly closed. Now, it's believed that the Grand Egyptian Museum's doors will remain completely shut until at least 2020. It's further speculated that the full opening of the new facility will follow in 2022 to mark the 100th anniversary of the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. Meanwhile, excavations have continued at the site of the mummification workshop. There, archaeologists plan to unseal further burial chambers and investigate the contents. Elsewhere, Egypt's tourist industry seems slowly to be recovering. Indeed, in 2017, some 8.3 million people visited the region, a massive leap from the 3.5 million recorded the previous year. And with innovations like the Grand Egyptian Museum, it's hoped that these numbers will continue to increase. Of course, an increased interest in the archaeology of ancient Egypt can only mean good things for sites like Saqqara as more money flows into the region. But does this ruined necropolis still have some secrets left to reveal? With so many mysteries still lost in the past, it seems likely that there are yet many discoveries still to come. Thank you.